Today we're going to talk about small business accounting and the move to the cloud. And our guest today is Kirsten Berry. She's the uh, owner of Vert Consulting, a uh, small and medium-sized business virtual CFO service uh, specializing in retail. Uh, and uh, Kirsten is certified in both QuickBooks and Xero, so she can give us a little perspective on both, as well as a bunch of add-ons for both of those. So uh, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, so let's let's start and jump right into small business accounting, kind of where it's been and what most people use, which I think is QuickBooks or has been, and where things are going. Uh, most companies are using QuickBooks because that's what they've heard of. Um, their colleagues are using QuickBooks. Um, they think that that's what they need to be using. I hear stories time and time again, though, that someone starts to use it, can't get set up, can't figure it out, gives up, and then just doesn't do accounting. That's part of the problem with QuickBooks <laughs> is it's not very user-friendly, and especially to someone that doesn't have bookkeeping experience or accounting experience, mm -hmm. it just is baffling. Right. No, I, I started using QuickBooks many years ago myself, and uh, I, uh, I found at first it was great, but you know, as we get spoiled with other uh, software and easier to use, I'm, I'm, I, had, I sort of started to get a little disenchanted with it. It's easy to do. <laughs> okay, I agree. And then, uh, then you know what what ha what has happened is all these cloud uh, uh, applications came along, and I remember myself. I started looking. You know, I'd really like to bring this into the cloud because I was going to for more like a lot, I think a lot of people are mobile business styles, and I wanted to be able to have my books either at home, or if I was at the office, or have somebody else look at it, and I didn't want to have to transfer this file around. So what are people trying to do to uh, integrate sort of cloud applications into uh, accounting solutions? It started out before Xero came to the market in the United States that we would try to find solutions to use QuickBooks that way. Uh, QuickBooks Online came out and was very difficult to use. Uh, didn't have a lot of the features. The drop-down menu is really tiny and small. You would have multiple browser windows open. It pretty much took me three times longer to get anything done, and there were some things that I couldn't actually do in it. Right. And then the solution was, uh, with the advent of cloud-based storage, taking that QuickBooks file and putting it in the cloud, but then you would have to make sure that both you and your client had the same platform and the same version of QuickBooks. And each one of those were a couple hundred dollars, so either they or you may not have had that. Right. So just wasn't working. Yeah, I know. I used a, I, for for a while. I was using a, a Dropbox to at least to back up my files into, so that um, at the same time that I had a local backup, it created an offsite backup, which I liked. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was also it's one of the benefits of the whole cloud computing idea is to get it out of your out of your off your premises. Exactly. If your computer crashes or someone steals it or just anything, the file corrupts. Um, which we all know, we've had, <laughs> every one of us has had this, all these things right. happen, uh, your file is gone. Um, and even if you had done a backup a week before, you're still missing a week's worth of information. Right. Okay, so at first when I heard about sort of the cloud computing thing, I, I, I wasn't sure about the benefits of it, but, uh, you know, larger businesses have been going this direction for quite a while. I do uh, quite a bit of work for, for larger companies who are doing enterprise software solutions, and they're all moving stuff off-premises to the cloud. And one of the things that they, they always say as benefits of, the, of that is that you're always on the current version. You know, so a lot of times, like with QuickBooks, you know, I was a version behind or a version ahead, and, and then if I, I was always worried if I installed that. Well, you know, yeah. what, what happens to people when they, you know, when, they tr when they get software conflicts, you know? Well, most of my clients would justify that they wouldn't upgrade every year because it was so expensive. So they would always be a couple of versions behind. Very few were on the current versions. And I would go from one client to a different client to a different client, and sometimes there would be a feature there, mm -hmm. and sometimes there wouldn't be. And I'd have to remember, oh yeah, in this version, QuickBooks hadn't released that, but this one over here, and then I would also spend some time trying to sell the client on upgrading and justifying that cost. Right. And then there's the other things that you work with, and so you know sometimes you'd have a, be having a problem. You'd call su cu a customer support, and they're like, "Well, so what version are you using? What computer are you using? What, you know, yeah. what other things are you using?" And 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 the combination of it all made, I think, the vendor's life uh, crazy too because they had all these versions of software. Yeah. So one of the benefits of the of the enterprise software has been uh, that. Uh, 
the software vendor is always on the same uh, version. When you call with the problem, they know what you're using because everybody's using the same thing. Of course, the downside is that if they, I guess if they have a problem, everybody has the problem. Yeah. But then they know about it really quickly. But those are $30,000 uh, softwares, I think, that you're describing. Things yes. like Dell oh, they Tech. Were huge. Or, yeah, exactly. I've worked on those as well. Right. And the trouble with that is also clients then have trouble upgrading. I've run into this a lot with uh, colleagues and companies I've worked at, and they're looking at putting in their budget 27000 or more dollars just to upgrade. I had one client actually spend, I think it was to upgrade to a system, getting away from QuickBooks, a $70,000 system. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah no, I've, I've heard for other, soft, other types of software, you know, six months installation and then... Uh, you know, it's, it's you know lots of money. So right. not for the small business. No. So for the teeny tiny little exactly. business, we were using QuickBooks on our desktop. But then we were also started using other cloud software like Dropbox and right. Uh, Evernote is a good example. And Facebook is cloud based. Fast, Facebook, yeah. All, most of the websites that we use are really it's a cloud based software if you think about it. Yeah. And, and so we get used to this kind of functionality, and then. Then when you go back to QuickBooks and you're in this closed system. But now they tried to t do a cloud version. Yes, they did. So tell you, I mean, you talked a little bit about that, but do you have, did you have clients on this? On the I did. <laughs> and I really wanted to scream. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was not by any of my choice. And I had to use it because they had either made the decision without me mm. or they were already on it. And it, like I said, would take me so much longer to do any of the activities it just didn't seem fair, especially when I was charging by the hour. Now, this was early on. Um, this would be only two years ago. Only two years, right. Uh, and I, I checked it out about two years ago, too. I was in, I was checking, I checked out that. There were a few different solutions, mm -hmm. and none of them seemed, including QuickBooks at the time, seemed ready for prime time. Right. And Zero didn't, well, it wasn't on my radar for some reason. It hadn't hit the United States until only a year and a half ago. Okay. It wasn't even a product made for the United States yet. Okay. They had to reprogram it for the United States, of course. Right, okay. Um, and it really took off last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's when, that's when I started to hear about it. Yeah. Uh, but before that, I had looked into these, and it seems like, like one, there was like no way to put in your bills. So right. you couldn't do it. I mean, how can you, um, I called them up, like, how, how can I budget if there's no way to put in like accounts payable. Right, and there are <laughs> companies that attempted to fix the problem they ran into with QuickBooks, and they developed some kind of solution, but not knowing the whole accountant cycle, because it really does include a bunch of things that you do. You, you, know, you have to do your actual checking account information, you have to actually pay some bills, you actually receive money, and all of these are together and in software, they actually all work together, which not everyone knows. Mm -hmm. And so some of these solutions, I think that you probably stumbled upon, maybe had one facet or the other facet, but they didn't have all three, which makes it incomplete. Right. And so I wound up buying, a couple of years ago, I wound up buying the version of QuickBooks, oh. right? <laughs> On my desktop, just because I was used to it. I knew yeah. it. Uh, but I knew that the, this cloud thing was coming. And so, uh, and I think, I do think, uh, in fairness to, to QuickBooks uh, Online, I think it's gotten quite a bit, way better than it was. They've been working hard at improving the product. The difficulty they're running into is they have a certain look and certain functions that work on the desktop version, and they tried placing that on a browser. Okay. And they tried making it look similar, they tried making the function seem similar, and those are two vastly different types of programming. So, right. Well, they're almost trapped by their own success, right? Because yeah. their current users expect when I move to the cloud, it's going to be the same thing, yeah. just online. Right, and it actually isn't. Right. So it's made it really difficult. So there's somewhere in between. Yeah. So anyway, so right. let's cover the benefits of being in the cloud as opposed to on the software, because that's the, one of the basic differences between what people are most people are probably currently doing with QuickBooks, and you know, it's a, there's a, a huge migration. So those who aren't part of it, I mean, I'm probably a lot of the audience has already moved to the cloud, but if they haven't, what are the big benefits? Uh, the first which most bookkeepers have had this experience with and CPAs is that you have different sets of files. So when you do books locally and you're actually doing the accounting on this file, you send it to a CPA who does adjustments. 
you then have to take those adjustments and then actually put them in your system to reflect what the CPA decided to make changes. When there is a separation of that, there's always going to be changes that have to be made. So that's frustrating, number right, one. Right. When your file is on the cloud, everyone's accessing the same file. Okay. So there's no difference between what they've adjusted compared to what you've adjusted. They adjust it, it's done, and you can continue to move on. It saves a lot of money for the client and a lot of frustration and time for the bookkeeper. Right, and I know we've had these periods like, okay, don't do anything with bookkeeping because we have it out to the, bookkeep the uh, right. uh, bookkeeper and we want to wait for it to come back. Okay, so what about secure the security of the cloud? A lot of people think that it seems like it's not secure, but it's actually more secure. Uh, they're hosted on servers that repeatedly do backups, and these are very high-end, large companies that that's their job. Uh, they have tons of employees and tons of staff and tons of technology that actually keep these things secure. And if you had a file on your own computer, you can password your file, but people can still break through that. You could format a hard drive. Um, unfortunately, people can still recover mm. you know, information from that. So having it locally is a lot less secure, especially if someone actually took your laptop right. and walked away with it or took your computer or walked away with it. Even perhaps a disgruntled employee has mm. access to that file. All you have to do is have a copy of it and you have everyone's social security number, all their vendor information. It's very dangerous, actually. Whereas with the cloud, uh, nobody can. As soon as a, a, an employee goes away, you change the passwords, and they can't access anything anymore. It's actually even easier than that. They have a user login. Zero mm -hmm. provides unlimited user logins for every account that you have. So if you have two people on staff that access it, or two hundred, they can all each have for the same amount. They can each have their logins, okay. and you just delete the user login. Oh, okay. It's that quick. And also, there are different roles and accessibility that you give to each person. So if you only want a person to deal with payables, you can give them just that section oh, okay. that they can see. Oh, that's, 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 that, that, that would be useful. Yes. <laughs> and in QuickBooks Enterprise, there is that as well, where you can actually designate, OK, this department only sees these things, and this department only sees this thing. So it's not a new concept, but Xero does accommodate for right, that. Right, permis permissions-based exactly. uh, kind of thing. Yeah, and you, know, you don't have to worry about um, you know, your computers crashing or people, or uh, in addition to theft, you do have fire or flood or, you know, who knows what happened. Even a, a, a power surge comes along and wipes out your, wipes out your data. Exactly. Now, hopefully you've had a backup. Hopefully. But like we said, it can be. Most of the clients that I had didn't. <laughs> really? <laughs> it would be one of the first things that I would show up and set them up on, like, hey, guys, because we're using QuickBooks, this is part of the thing that you need to do. This is the workaround. You need to have a backup system in place. Right. Um, even if it's short of, and what I would get do um, is to get a thumb drive, and I would do a thumb drive backup. But then I ended up with re either rewriting the file over itself or just having tons of file backups. So when it comes to secur security, there's various levels of encryption and security. T let's talk about that. So yes, Xero is actually secured twice as much as when you log into a bank to do online banking. Okay. You know, when you go to log on and I don't think I've run into anyone that's had a concern or security question about that. No, I think everybody does online banking. Right. So people I've had approach me and wonder, is Xero secure? Xero is actually secured twice as much in the logon process. So when you log on to a bank, mm -hmm. it's encrypted. And that's at a level what's called 128-bit encryption. When you log on to Xero, it's actually at 256-bit encryption. Oh, OK. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so it's very secure from wherever you're accessing on any browser. And then, like we mentioned, it's hosted by Rackspace, which does backups and secondary backups all the time. So the other thing about cloud computing that's different from, from other things, a lot of people, some people don't like it, but it's the idea of a subscription. So you don't have to come up with a lump sum and pay the software. Like with QuickBooks, it's 300 something. Right. Yeah. If you were to stay up to date on the version in QuickBooks, mm -hmm. it's three hundred dollars a year. Okay. Every version they release, and it's about once a year. Okay. Is that amount? All right. And if you were to compare that to on zero, where you, because it's cloud based, they do updates um, incrementally, probably every three to six weeks, and maybe offline for an hour while they do that, mm -hmm. and then you log on and it's upgraded right then. 
is just a little over $300. So as far as actually cost of accounting software, it's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same. Uh, except, you know, the, the, there is an advantage in that um, if I had uh, two people working on my accounting in my, in my office, I'd have two computers, I'd have to buy the software twice. Yeah, you have to buy multiple licenses. Right. Whereas with Zero, I think it's just one. It's just one license, right? Yeah, you can have unlimited users with Zero, okay. so you don't have to worry about any kind of licensing whatsoever. Okay, so now let's get to what what, what became my choice when I surveyed the landscape, which I, I went with Zero. That's uh, what you primarily use now for your clients. I actually only use Zero now for my clients. You only use Zero now for, but you had been a QuickBooks person before. Yes, for eight years. Oh, okay. Actually, since the '90s. Okay. So, and I was actually um, a beta tester for QuickBooks, like way back, I was using Quicken for my business checking account, and I said, hey, you need to add, uh, uh, you need to add some way of invoicing. And they said, oh, we have this thing in beta. So, uh, I've been using, I was using QuickBooks for a long time, and I actually, and you, have both come to the conclusion that, that zero was what we think is a, a good solution for small businesses. And I'm not a partner or in any way affiliated, it's just my own particular feeling. And well, at the end of the day, what's best for the company is the right product. Mm -hmm. So Xero is great for small to medium-sized businesses, which is really the backbone of our economy. Mm -hmm. And then there are medium and larger businesses that have a lot of transactions or certain procedures that other software really is a good fit for. So I will not ever go around saying fanatically, Everyone must be on zero right. because a company really needs to decide what works best for them and what's the most efficient for them. Um, I feel like for a company that is small, like maybe one to ten employees, zero is excellent. Now, uh, but it doesn't handle inventory, or does it? It does not. Okay. Um, purchase orders are actually coming very soon. Oh, okay. Yeah, they just did a release about that yesterday. Okay. Um, and there are other what's called add-ons. Okay. that handle inventory for the company. So let's talk a little bit about where somebody should be looking at um, at staying on QuickBooks, when they should transition to something like Xero, uh, and when Xero is not enough. Where, where, where does Xero push the limits? Xero is great for startup companies, um, companies that do invoicing, companies that provide services, and it is also used for uh, almost every other niche by adding the add-ons to it. Okay. Uh, when I set up clients on Zero, I set them up with add-ons. I don't have any clients that actually don't have add-ons connected to Xero. Oh, okay. And that's exciting because Xero has over 250 certified add-on companies. They actually go through a certification process. And what is it, what, so what would an add-on do? That's a, what's a, a very popular typical add-on that somebody would do? I can explain one for my clients. I specialize in retail and e-tail. So there is a software called Vend. Okay. And it does have inventory. Okay. It is a point of sale system. So for example, when you walk into a store and someone's ringing you up, mm -hmm. that there it's on an iPad. Uh-huh. And they're punching it in and ringing you up and selling something with that. Mm -hmm. And that information actually transfers to zero. So no, Sales more, tax. No, so, there's, so no more cash register. It replaces the cash register. Yeah. So for example, if you're selling items that have sales tax, mm -hmm. you have to pay sales tax every couple months. You need to have very accurate reporting. You do not want to tangle with right. that part of the government about getting a sales tax audit is very harrowing. So it downloads that information into Zero instantaneously, automatically, and in seconds you can print a report and have your numbers. Okay, and is there any, uh, so do you ever go to the just the Venn site to do stuff? Well, Are they always integrated or is it sort of a separate system? That always talk to? integrated. Always integrated. Yeah, it's built that way. Okay. Basically, Xero made their software with what's called an open API, okay. which says, we made the software and we're giving you some openings where uh, you can program your software to communicate to our software. Okay. It's limited for security reasons. There's only certain things that can be done, and each software adjusts for that. But in the end of the day, basically this other add-on will do what it needs to do for your industry, and then it in transfers the information into Zero, so you can do your bookkeeping with that. Okay. So Vend handles inventory and point of sale sales. And that's it. And that's it. Yeah. And then what would be some other kind of add-ons that would expand functionality? Um, I'm a big fan of something called Bill.com. Mm -hmm. They recently integrated with Xero and you can put all your payables and receivables through there. 
and then it imports into Zero. It actually, that particular software communicates back and forth between Zero and Bill.com. Okay. So you can actually have your bill in hand, mm -hmm. scan it in, and then it goes into Bill.com. You have to type in some information about it. Well, the bills you receive. Exactly. So Payables. you know like when you get like a pile right. in the mail and you just start putting them? On your yeah, desk, I and they just all too well. <laughs> right, and they just keep adding up. So instead of that happening, um, you can a tell these vendors to digitally send things to you. Okay. Bill.com gives you an email address where it can actually go straight into Bill.com. Okay. And then the file is electronic, so you don't have paper. You put in its information about it, so you're not going to actually forget to pay the bill. I see. And then it will send a check out for you. Even it's pretty advanced and tell Zero that it's been paid for you. And what are the advantages of that over just having your bank bill pay system do it? Uh, you have this huge document storage for every bill and every vendor. So if you look up the gas company, right. you can see physically every bill that you have as well as all your payments to them. Okay, instead of going to your bank account, clicking on it and then it takes you to their website and then you have to log in and then you get it or sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. And right. You know, I guess it's kind of, it, it, it brings it all into one place. But it also goes into your, for a company, this is really important, it goes into Zero, And yeah. Zero has a really easy to understand dashboard that will show you what money you have coming in, what money that is about to go out, and what money you currently have. And QuickBooks has a dashboard and Zero both, they both have dashboards. They okay. have these, you log on, you kind of get a summary of what's going on. The Zero dashboard is very clean, very crisp, very aesthetic. They call it a beautiful accounting software. That's their logo for a reason. And it is browser built. So when they built this software, they thought, what would look good? What would work on a browser? Let's build it with this coding and this kind of visual in mind. Okay. And that was my first moment of, wow, this this is good. This I can read this. My clients can read this. I think we're on to something here. Not trying to put too much on the screen. Exactly. Which also helps usability because, you know, you know, you think, well, aesthetic, who cares, really, it's an accounting system, but, you know, if it, if it makes it easier and more approachable to use, that helps. It does, because I encourage my clients to be as familiar with their books as possible. I want them to have as much of a hands-on approach. I want them to feel comfortable logging in, looking at bills, looking at their accounting, seeing their money. I don't want their eyes to roll over and they just throw their hands up in the <laughs> air and say, no, I don't want to know anything about finances. Um, the more in control they are of their money, the better they can run their business. Okay. So it is important to me to have the screen that they're looking at be comfortable and not scary and overwhelming to them. Okay. So that's, you know, so, so they both have dashboards. What are some other similarities and differences maybe between the two? Um, Zero redesigned the concept of reconciliation. In QuickBooks, you reconcile once a month with a statement. You have a separate module, a separate screen that you go into, and it shows you everything that has been done that you told QuickBooks that had been done. Mm -hmm. And then you look at what the bank said and you do that process. And um, if you're lucky, <laughs> everything went incorrectly. Um, and if you're unlucky because of typo, because of um, sometimes with the automatic feeds of QuickBooks, there's multiple transactions. It really just depends on who's actually been in the books. Mm -hmm. um, if there's any imperfection, then you have to go and figure out, well, why am I 20 cents off? Right. And that 20 cents could be $1,000 here and 1,020 cents over here. Like you don't really know right. where it'd be to go and do detective work. And when you're working at companies that have 10 pages of bank reconciliation, bank like uh, transactions, right, right. that's a lot to go through right. and figure out like, where did this go wrong? Yeah, we well, even have just a couple of pages can take a while, you know, especially if you're not if, you know, I think a lot of small business, uh, you know, people who are doing their own books, they're not professional bookkeepers. So right. Like, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So how does, how does uh, uh, let's talk about how Zero uh, does that. You know, I, for me, I noticed it was different and I'm like, uh, you know, but I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't hone in on what exactly about it was different. So maybe you can. So what Zero did is they developed it differently and I hope that it's going to revolutionize the accounting industry actually. QuickBooks and other accounting software took the information of accounting that came from basic, like when we had to do a journal and piece of paper back mm -hmm. centuries ago, and 
This is the way that we had to figure out how to keep things straight. The 80s, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, literally, you had to have these certain procedures so it would make sense so you knew that money was all accounted for. And software companies just replicated that from there into software. And when you do one transaction, multiple things have to happen. And you don't see it, it's all behind the scenes. But as a bookkeeper, you usually have to do some of those things in order to th make the accounting all match up. Well, that's why we have to take our QuickBooks to the bookkeeper so that they can figure out when we mess something up, yeah. how to back things out in the different stuff that we don't, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's not as straightforward as you would think. So Zero tried to solve that, and they did a great job by limiting some of those procedures. So the the screen that you're talking about is the bank feed screen, and you actually reconcile right then and there. So every day you can reconcile, which is a whole different concept. What happens is transactions occur in the world. You go out and you go to Starbucks and you buy something. Right. You see in your bank that you bought that coffee. In Zero, it actually downloads that you bought that Starbucks for that amount. And all you have to do, if you've never gotten a Starbucks transaction before, is type in, Starbucks, uh, meals and entertainment, is actually right. a category that you used to do, <laughs> and um, assign it. And if you've actually typed that in before, it remembers it and will automatically pull that up next time without you even having to make a bank roll. Okay. And if you want to actually go so far as to making what's called a bank roll, which has it memorized every time you see Starbucks, assign it to Starbucks, then it will do that. And does it work if it's like, you know, sometimes these things come in and they're, the transaction is 050, zero, zero, long string of numbers, Starbucks, well, you can make the rule that says if any field contains the word Starbucks, uh -huh. please assign it to Starbucks. Oh, okay. So you can eliminate all those things and it will still pull out and detect what you say. Good. And I do that with payroll for clients. Um, when payroll comes in, and I'm sure business owners have this experience, they see all of these different deposits and pullings out and they're just like, what? This is all coming from the payroll company, but I don't know what these things are. Right. Each one is actually an individualized transaction and you can code it to say this is taxes, this is wages, this is the bank actual payroll fee. Right, well, and then it's complicated by, you know, part of it comes out as a, on, a, on, a, on one check and part of it comes out on one debit, you know, because, you know, it's the stuff that you pay and they pay. And, but the, even, even so, it's several transactions. But they have, in those, mm -hmm. they actually have very specific repeated symbols and codes oh, right, that right. you can say, if this says this, it's this. Oh, so, so you can set up the whole transaction to just automatically go to the right? Yeah, so every time that you do payroll, you don't have to go back and say, what was this one? Was this taxes or was this wages? I don't remember. Yeah, I know, yeah, you can actually set that up so you don't have to think about it after again. They gave us a 15 minute training that I forgot. Oh, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that can all be set up ahead of time and it will take you seconds to actually reconcile your transactions rather than hours to days. Ah, I have to delve back in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> QuickBooks actually has a way to download transactions. It's not the same and you still have to do multiple steps to get the same product that you could do in zero automatically. Right, you still have to go through that reconciliation step of, yeah. of matching what the bank says to what you already have in your thing, assuming you have it in your th in your ledger, and if not, you have to add it. A lot of those little incidental Starbucks, yeah. you know, you're not gonna come back to the office and enter that into your bookkeeping system necessarily. Right. You'll find out about it when the bank statement comes, or, you know, I mean. You, exactly, and to be fair, you know, when I would go to my clients who hadn't had a bookkeeper, had a bookkeeper not doing the job correctly, mm -hmm. the ones that were doing the downloads through QuickBooks hadn't ever reconciled, thought that they were reconciling by doing these downloads, mm -hmm. and their balance was way off. Wow. And the point of doing the reconciliation is to say, what happened in the real world happened here, and I have this much money left over. Right. And you want to know that quicker than every month. Right. Yeah, you actually want to know that. And what I would do is I'd have to do these workarounds of doing like daily reconciliations all the time, which mm -hmm. would be very time consuming and take up like an hour of my day in the morning. Okay. Whereas I was impressed with zero, I don't have to do any of that anymore ever again. That just once you reconcile, you mm -hmm. see what you have. Right. You can actually make choices from there. Okay. Uh, so what are some what were some of the other things that are differences that you like or, or, or don't like or I also, let's, let's stick yeah. with what you like for now. Well, what I like about Zero is the reporting functions as well. They look very simple when you pull up the reporting section, but they're actually very powerful. When you open each report, you have all these different ways to customize that show you comparisons, they show you variants. 
uh, you can choose um, to look at your budget that you set up in Zero and compare what you actually have had. There's so many ways to slice and dice these reports that make them very useful. And then, is there something that you miss from QuickBooks that you wish you had? Um, so far, no. Oh, wow. Yeah. I expected there to be something. No, there really hasn't <laughs> been, which is really interesting. I'm Purchase orders are coming. Okay. So I miss that, but the add-ons have purchase order functionality. Okay. So, so anything that's missing, because Qu QuickBooks is such a large, has gotten to be such a large program. Yeah. So anything that's missing from the f core functionality of Zero is, you'd say, is available as a in an add-on. Exactly. It's through another software, another company that's specific to what that industry is. So if that industry normally has POs, that software has POs in it. Got it. And that information does still transfer into Zero. The books still show this, when you look and do the reports to see what your P&L is, it still shows everything. So there's a lot of custom software for certain industries yes. that would be very useful that work integrate with Zero. Exactly. Okay. And these are called add-ons. So take me through a, a, a typical business that would use several different add-ons and what that might look like so that people can get an idea what, um, you know, how they can make sort of a complete package out of this. Well, what I set people up on right now, the most common setup, is of course Zero, mm -hmm. And then I add Vend, which is their point of sale, which mm -hmm. is how they sell in the actual store. Then when they do their e-commerce, mm -hmm. so their online shopping, okay. they use an add-on called Shopify. Okay. And because I don't want them to lose receipts or worry about getting audited or have a pile of receipts that they don't know what to do with, and legally we need to keep these receipts, I set them up on another add-on called Receipt Bank, which puts their receipts into digital form. Okay. And then I also set them up on something called Bill.com, which pays their bills and allows me to run the bill payment system remotely. So if I'm not actually there receiving the bills, mm -hmm. I can't be in control of what happens with them. Right. And I can't expect an owner to put them in correctly into zero because that's the knowledge of even just putting in bills the correct way is usually not what a business owner even knows. Okay. So if you put them in wrong, then it defeats the whole purpose of having that system in place in bookkeeping. I see. Bill.com gives the functions that they can do, like scanning it in, mm -hmm. putting in some vendor information in. It They can easily do that on their own. They can do that a thousand miles away. I can log in and manage that bill and do what needs to be done with it. And then it gets paid very easily. So you could be anywhere. Exactly. Yeah, and the owner could, if they wanted to do some of it to take the load off you, save a little money, yeah. they could do some of that themselves. They can do what they are comfortable with. Exactly. And then you can pick up the, the rest. And at all, any, exactly. We used to have somebody come into the office and park themselves at the computer. Right, and that's what I used to have to do. Right. So with the advent of cloud computing, I can actually be doing things from anywhere. My clients can be anywhere, and I can still make sure that everything is kept on top of. Okay, and it has all the core functionality that you would need in a, in a, in a proper accounting pr proper accounting system. Yeah, Xero itself is. Right. But when you want to add very specific functions, that's when these other add-ons come in, which is great because they've all been certified, they've all been tested, their software integrates with Xero, it doesn't have bugs or error messages, and to be honest, they have the best support I've ever had to deal with. Really? Every single one of these companies that I've just named have amazing support if I do have a question or something does go wrong. Yeah, it seems like the support has really come a long way on these some of these, um, especially for some of the online software vendors. Yeah. It's a uh, uh, high priority. And yeah, it's much better than what I used to have to deal with, <laughs> and I'm very grateful. <laughs> okay. So Zero is a is a is a new software, and I imagine it's evolving. At what point does is it not capable of doing the things for a company? I mean, it's not it's not enterprise level software. So what, exactly, is, what, where does it where does it fall down? Where does it start to fall apart? Well, what I've noticed with clients, potential clients that have approached me, um, if they have a lot of other types of programming that integrate into other types of systems that then integrate into um, something very large. At that point, Zero doesn't give a lot of openings with their API because of security. So at that point, what it is some limited. Sort of example? Um, there was a company that was a what's called a title clearing company mm -hmm. that processed thousands of checks a day. 
So there are small, medium, and large versions of of zero, and the larger version, for example, handles multi-currency in real time, which, wow. by the way, QuickBooks doesn't do at all, and you have to compensate for it and do the math. You have to actually log into a different website, do the math for that day, and then compensate it in the transaction, wow. by the way. So yeah, it's a whole different process where zero just does it automatically and then gives you a report showing you what the differential is. Um, so when you get to that level, that's where these other enterprise systems, I think, do work for a company. Um, Zero's really made their product to handle the small to medium-sized businesses because that really is the majority of the businesses worldwide and the United States and is really the backbone of our economy. So supporting them and having them really keep afloat and stay in business is a big deal and really helpful. And you don't feel that there's anyone too small for Zero? No. No, it's 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 entry it's it's entry level. Well, if you really do want to use it on an individual basis, uh -huh. there's a personal edition. Oh, okay. Yeah, and all of these also are available on iPhones and Android application phones, and a person can do their banking actually on the phone on the go. At least some basic stuff, not probably all the functionality. Most of it's actually accessible through the phone really? app. Yeah. Reconciling, some, reconciling your accounts on the on You can on, actually reconcile, exactly. You can do that <laughs> very quickly. So you could just be sitting there and doing this, and about that time you could have it reconciled. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty, pretty good. Yeah, exactly. So wow. you don't have to sit at home and sit on your computer and a lot of time when you could be doing something else, spending time with your family, spending time creating on your business. Mm -hmm. That's really what I would prefer to see business owners doing is being creative on the business, not worrying about how do I know what I made today. Right, right. And I noticed you had an iPad. It works on the iPad as well pretty well. Yes, very okay. well, yeah. So why don't you show us some of the basic features of Zero and the things that you think that um, people should know about it to, you know, really that set, it, set it apart from other things. Okay. One of the things that we talked about before was okay. the dashboard. Mm -hmm. And here you can see your bank accounts will be on the left. Mm -hmm. And if you scroll down, you can see where you have money coming in, which is always important for a company to know. And you can actually see your bills, the money going out. So this is a typical business right here. Their balance in their checking account is actually going down, which is bad. But they have outstanding invoices, money coming in, which is good because we can see that they definitely have some bills that need to get paid. So at a glance, a company can just see right now where they stand and what needs to happen. If I saw this on a client, I would ask them to make some phone calls on the clients that they have, the customers they have, and That's say, what I was say. Yeah, exactly. They need to like, make some phone calls, get the money in so they can pay the bills. Exactly. So we can go into those specific areas in a minute, but I want to show this reconciliation screen, which is going to look a lot different than what we're used to in QuickBooks. Right. Yeah, I remember going through it and going, oh, I don't know, this is so different. And at first, like, resisting it, but then thinking to myself, well, you know, actually, this might be a better way of thinking about it. It's a really new, innovative concept that makes sense. The first transaction we're going to talk about is that this person received money from Ridgeway University. Right here, there was an invoice that mm -hmm. was made in zero beforehand saying that Ridgeway University owes us this money. Okay. And it's green because zero automatically detected that it matched up. So it's saying, is this one, is this the one you're talking about? Exactly. Okay. So in QuickBooks, this would be a whole procedure that I'd have to go through, whereas here I literally click the OK button, just okay. like that, and it's reconciled. Okay. It is now I seem to remember doing something like that on QuickBooks to match matching things up, at least on the version I had. You have to, yeah. yeah. So for example, we only reconciled that one thing, but we can go back to our dashboard and see that it's making a difference in our account. We still have 28 more items to go. So the way that I would go through here, I would see that this matches up. Mm -hmm. This is a great feature. It's called the Discuss button. When I don't know what City Limousines is for, for a client, they log in and they write, this is a payment on a really old invoice, so I wasn't sure what to code it. Or actually, that's what I would write to them. And they would then respond saying, it is this certain thing. So at 
In Owner's Convenience, they can log into Xero and let me know what certain transactions are for, and I don't have to have my reconciliation process held up because I'm waiting for them. And in the past, I would actually have to make a meeting, sit down, have the list of transactions that I weren't, wasn't sure what they were, go over the information about it, possibly research it, and then enter it in. And in the meantime, once you finished your reconciliation, your, the reconciliation was a thing that had to happen every month, right? Yeah. And you had to get through everything, the whole thing, before it was like completed. Exactly. Whereas this is a piecemeal process. I, I wouldn't say it's piecemealed. I would say that it's um, done in a different fashion. You're reconciling in a time period that's different than that monthly time period. And correct accounting is that you actually still do a monthly reconciliation process, and that is in zero, to where you can designate what your time period is and reconcile against your statement. And you, one should do that. Okay. But you can still see what you have in your account at any given time by doing this process on a daily basis. So I log into my client's books probably every other day okay. and go through and see what transactions have come in and reconcile them and then move on to other procedures that need to be done. So they can always see where they stand without having to log into their bank, deduct all the things that they think they might have paid, right. and then try to figure out what they actually have. Right. So yeah, so this chart right here right. is showing where you stand in real time. Yeah, so if I had $1,000 that I had paid but hadn't reconciled yet, it knows that the bank already did it, and it knows that I have a check, but it doesn't know that they're one and the same. Exactly. So after I reconciled it, it will add the $1,000 back into what I it thinks I have. Because until you reconcile it, it thinks it's two separate transactions. Am I correct there? Until you reconcile it, it doesn't know that it's actually occurred yet. So you oh, have okay. statement balance, and then you have balance in zero. And they are two different things. And your goal here, and it's kind of like a fun game, mm -hmm. is to get them to be the same. Okay. And that's what you do when you do this reconciliation. Okay. And these 28 items would probably, as long as there's um, not information that I have to go out and research and wait for information and come back, these 28 items would probably take me a matter of maybe 15 minutes max to do. Let's go look at the reconciliation screen again and go, th go through where you were, uh, what you were showing us. So we're going to leave that one blank. Okay. Um, I do know that for the Jacaranda Maple Systems, or actually under Smart Agency, this very top one here, I know that two invoices constituted that $4,500 that we see here. So you click and you can actually go and find that. So it's this invoice and it's this invoice that oh. matches up. And then once you get the amounts up to match up, it turns green. Yep. All done. So that one has now been reconciled. At some point, Ridgeway Bank was already written. It memorizes it, recognizes it. I just hit OK. I just keep going down and hitting OK, OK. And then the ones that I haven't hit OK on, I can go back later and research and fill in. Okay. And that makes it very quick and very easy to get what the goal of this is, is to find out how much money do you actually have. Right. And also catch, if there is a problem, catch it right away. Right, instead of waiting to the end of the month. In fact, I think some yes. of the credit card processors, unless you can test things like immediate, like within four days or something ridiculous. Yeah, they for say, the oh, merchant transactions? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they say it's, oh, no, you didn't tell us in time. So. Yeah, exactly, and that's a problem. Yes. So this is really good because you are getting your information, your accounting information quick. You can also, which the product of this is that this will show your sales, this will show what you've paid out and to who you've paid, you then can make reports and analyze your reports every day, every week, anytime you need to actually look at where your books stand because the information that constitutes that report is up to date. That's really how this is a much more beneficial than doing something on a monthly basis. Okay. We're going to go back to the dashboard. Okay. And let's look at these invoices coming in. So this is what is called the sales dashboard. Mm -hmm. You have a couple different ways that you can look at this. Here on the left, you can see what's planned, what's owed, and what's planning on coming in. And here on the right, you can actually see who owes you more. So if you click on this pie version, which I like to do instead, you get a visual of, oh, City Limousines really owes us a lot of money. 
that's the first person we should call. Okay. So this gives you the quickest insight in order to figure out where to go and who to call, rather than printing out a report, looking over the report, seeing what the numbers are, doing the math in your head, which is more than another number. Right. This will quickly tell you where everything stands. And like we talked about earlier, give them a call and ask them to get paid. Yeah. You can actually email them the invoice again if they say that they perhaps lost it or didn't right. receive it. While you're on the phone, <laughs> you can say, hey, no worry, Bob, I'm going to send to you right now. And right. then they don't have any excuse that they didn't get the invoice and that they can't pay you. Right. What's another uh, primary thing that people should, uh, should know about? If they are putting their bills in the system, okay. they can also see how that is going. Right now that they can see that there's, and it's in red, I like the color coding, mm -hmm. they can see that there are some things overdue, there are some things that are due right now. They can make a bill be in draft form. And like we mentioned before, there are add-ons that can do purchase orders and more extravagant information than these. But once you put a bill in, and I can show you an example. You can do partial payments just like QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. Um, you can have their contact information, you can leave their contact information out. You have the same fields that you have in all standard accounting software, as well as you can print it to PDF, you can modify it, there, you can add a credit note to it, you can do everything you can do for accounting. And how easy is it to move stuff from QuickBooks into this? Um, it really depends. There is actually a process that Xero does uh, in the company itself, not something that I do, where they actually import uh, information in. So it's a bit of a process, but it's generally pretty easy. Um, you have to set up chart of accounts, or you can import new chart of accounts if mm -hmm. they weren't good before, right. which unfortunately sometimes happens It does more give you not. a chance to reevaluate where you are. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. You can say like... Not bring all your old mistakes with you. Right, like maybe these weren't the right chart of accounts to be using. Um, there's different philosophies and different ways because people aren't trained on QuickBooks necessarily, but they yet use it in a company, mm -hmm. that there's correct and incorrect ways to set up chart of accounts. Um, I'm just pulling up the report screen. Okay. These are all the different reports that you can get. The most common though that people really like is what's called an income statement or a P&L. Mm -hmm. And when we go into this, you can kind of see that it's doing a comparison every month. Oh, okay. So you have that option. You can do year to date progress, month to date progress. You can compare regions. So you remember classes in QuickBooks? How you can say right. that I want to track this certain thing and I want to track this certain thing. And it's different than categories. It's different than your chart of accounts. That's what this uh, section right here does. We titled, for this particular company, we titled it Regions because this company wants to see their different sales in different regions. Mm -hmm. But depending on what kind of company you have, you can actually analyze in whatever way that you want. Okay. And then you can compare. And that way you can easily look, if I clicked on Compare Regions. So I got East Side, North, South, West Coast. East Side doesn't have any sales. I see. So if I were, this was a real client and I were to they you know, call me and they said, I don't know what's going on with my company. Something's really off. I just can't figure it out. Uh, do, are we collecting right? Are we, maybe we're paying too many bills. I can actually look at this and send this over to them while on the phone and give an assessment and say, I actually noticed that Eastside is not having any sales and maybe we need to check out what's going on in that sales department. Right. right. So that quickly an owner can adjust in their company and make something, change something about what's being done rather than a month, two months, three months down the road or the unfortunate, they go out of business because they couldn't figure out what was going wrong. Right, right. Uh, what are, uh, yeah, cash flow problems will kill, kill you quicker than anything else. What are some of the other ca things that are for cash flow that people would want to be taking a look here? What are some uh, reports that people want to take a look at it on a regular basis? <laughs> you know, we so, always like to look at the uh, age receivables uh, uh, category and see uh, how much was coming in. That's my favorite as well. <laughs> Here, for example, 
we can see that these people owe us this much currently, mm -hmm. this month for June, May, April, no one older, thankfully, because we have pretty good collections, apparently. Mm -hmm. So this is a very easy way that you can just see who owes you. But one of my favorite parts is publishing these reports. More times than not, I had clients uh, when I would print out a QuickBooks report and I myself was very comfortable with them because I was used to looking at them. But they're very small font. Um, you don't have a lot of options. Landscape, portrait. I would probably spend more time orienting the report to look good, to present it to the owner, than actually creating the report. Right, because the report in QuickBooks, it was always pretty quick, it just came up. Right, but it didn't necessarily fall right on a page and it's to a way that an owner could assess it very quickly. Right. So uh, I've had them say, can't you put this in Excel? Can't you do this? Can't you do that? No, I'm sorry, this is really the limitation. This is what I have to show you. But let me do some highlights and let me do some circles and I would try to make it look prettier right. in order to make it look <laughs> a little bit better for the, the owner. I'm going to actually um, publish this and show you what it looks like. So there are multiple ways that we can actually look at it. We can look at it as an Excel, a CSV, or my favorite, the Adobe. Okay. Yeah, that has the advantage of looking the same on everybody's computer. Yeah, everybody can read this. Every, and what's also easy about Xero is when you save it on the client side, it shows up in their report module as well. So literally on the phone while I'm talking to a client, and I've done this and that's the advantage of it, is you could tell them, okay, go to your reports, pull up the report that I just made you right now. And it's that is. quick. Right. Yeah, you're like having a 15 minute conversation rather than an hour long process where you're sending this back and forth and back and forth. They can be pulling it up in zero while you're in zero at the same time. Oh, that was another thing about zero that I liked is there wasn't a situation really where you could be doing something and forget to save it, and so then it's not there. It's 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 like it saves every time you hit enter, enter, or enter every time every number that you put in. It's it's saved exactly. And so there's no uh, filling out something, getting distracted, coming back, closing it, and having you know. Then it's gone. You know. I take it you've done that. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this is a very very simple report. You can add graphs. You can add footnotes. You can get very detailed into these reports. They're very easy to read, they're very aesthetic, and I feel like my clients have been able to look at this report and really get a quick understanding of what I'm trying to point out to them or show them or discuss with them. Yeah, I know for us, we have, uh, we have the small business file uh, mm -hmm. as a company, we have Ludlow Media, our production arm, as a, as, a, as a separate thing. One of the things that we also like is they have the, we can, can switch between branding on the invoices. Exactly. So that we can send out invoices one way or, or the other way and, and they all look everything looks really pretty good yeah you can customize it um, each client has their own customization that they do and yeah. like you said they have different templates yeah and the big thing for me is I always had and I did had this with with QuickBooks as well I set I sent out the invoice and I have a, a link for them to click to pay it online because mm -hmm. I want to be them I don't want to wait for checks if I if I can get them to pay it online all the better, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, and that's particular to service businesses, you know, would like to do that. Um, and I, I, with QuickBooks, I got a lot of, I did get a lot of complaints from people. It's like, I have to log in and I have to do, you know, it, it was very confusing. And, and with Zero, people are going, going on, they're telling me they actually like the process better. I've uh, found the same thing with my clients. It's been very easy to send them an invoice. There's a link to pay electronically. And there's a bunch of companies now that Xero works with right. that they, you can choose. I really love how Xero makes that possible, and I don't I haven't had any other experience with any other software that's like that. So while we have you here, we want to ask you a couple of questions just on some general accounting stuff, just because we really haven't had that as a topic on the show yet. So what is it that you see in your clients that's something that, that is, you, can t you can give people advice to not screw themselves over really badly in their accounting? <laughs> I feel like a common mistake is small businesses don't have a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. So they think that they don't have to stay on top of things. But to grow and to get more sales or to maybe pay for some marketing or some advertising, 
they really need to know where they stand and what money is going where. I've had many companies not realize they've spent a large amount of money in a certain area and not realize that it's maybe out of proportion for what they have. Um, I've also seen a lot of companies think that they can buy things because they have money coming in, but they're not thinking that they actually have bills coming up and so that money is already allotted to something else. Um, and that can manifest itself in all different ways. I've seen it um, on large balance credit cards. I've seen it um, with lines of credit. And that can be actually pretty dangerous. Um, I feel like a company needs to, the less money they have, the more closely they need to see where every penny is going and coming in and stay on top of it. And is there some sort of proportion, uh, you think, uh, of time that people need to allot to it, like per dollar amount, or is there some, some sort of a guideline that people should follow? Um, I think that people need to have a system in place where they or they hire somebody to, on a weekly basis, look at where their accounting stands and then give the owner at the lightest possible information, at least give the owner where things stand at that point on a weekly basis. Let's talk about uh, a couple of different kinds of businesses and what their biggest uh, accounting challenges are. Like in retail, since mm -hmm. that's your specialty, what, what are their biggest really accounting challenges that they should be concerned with? I feel like it's organization and systems. If you can get things automated and you can get things that integrate with each other, then you can get your information out quickly. For example, I do set people up on this Zero and Vend integrated system because I found that it is the quickest way to integrate your sales into your accounting and get the information out that you need. I also add the add-on with the bill.com because I want my clients to be on top of their bills. I've walked into clients' spaces and it's just rows of bills and rows of papers and that's just overwhelming and confusing and if they have to do that much work with a piece of paper they're going to eventually walk away from it not get it done because they're busy running this business right so getting these things digital and getting them automated in a system as quick as possible I think will lend itself that they can grow in keeping those systems in place they can grow bigger and things can be turnkey as they grow it's very daunting, I think, for a business to say, oh, I want to be high tech, I want to be efficient, um, and I go so far as promoting about being eco-friendly. They're using a lot less paper when they're doing any of these systems. That's true. Yeah. So when someone wants to go that route, there's a lot, like you said, there's a lot of options out there, and they have to do a lot of research and figure out what matches with what, that integrates with what, so you're not just still doing all of the data entry and all the work. There's no point in having all this high-tech stuff if you're actually still spending days putting that information in. And like you said, if you're a small business, most likely you don't have a bookkeeper or you have one that comes in once a week just to make sure everything's okay. You want to do as much of the process automatically as possible. So if people want to find out more about this, there is a, a free demo of Zero on the Zero website. It's actually a free trial. It's a free trial. Yeah, and they can log in, set up their bank accounts, play with it, see how it works, see if they like it, and if they, they do, they can continue to use it. Okay, and if they're a retail uh, customer, they should probably talk to you about getting all the integrations put together. I can put all the puzzle pieces together for them. <laughs> okay, that's great. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And uh, there's links to the Zero website as well as uh, Kirsten's uh, Verte Consulting or Vert Consulting, which is spelled Verte, V-E-R-T-E. And there's a link to that down below at the bottom of this page.